Today, we're going to take a little deeper look into the Chameleon Antenna's Impass 2.0, so please keep watching for more. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Well, in a previous video, we took a look at Chameleon Antenna's MPAS 2.0. Uh, the MPAS, or Modular Portable Antenna System, is a um, complete kit of a high-efficiency uh, portable uh, in a modular antenna system that com uh, combines a wide variety of components. Uh, you get some, you get some whips, you get some wire elements uh, to um, create a highly configurable antenna that will meet, you know, a wide variety of needs of a uh, field uh, ham radio operating. So, uh, just to kind of recap, what all is included with the MPAS 2.0 is um, the is is the main component uh, the. Uh, Micro hybrid, actually, this is the um, mini hybrid uh, transformer unit. This is a five to one uh, transformer. That's the uh, the base of um, all of the all of the different uh, varieties or configurations you can you can uh, do with the antenna. Uh, you get a ground spike, a stainless steel spike for uh, ground mounting the antenna. Uh, you get two whips. Uh, you get the mill whip, uh, which is. Uh, uh, approximately uh, nine feet, and uh, the mill extension, uh, which is approximately eight feet. And uh, when you combine these two, you get um, you get 18 feet of uh, vertical whip uh, for a uh, for a vertical antenna system. Uh, you, uh, also, you receive uh, 50 feet of, of coax with the with the ferrite choke balance on the end. And uh, the two pieces that we're really going to look at today is the uh, 73 feet uh, wire element and a uh, 25 foot uh, counterpoise element. And uh, the counterpoise element is, um, you know, basically this is this you'll use in just about all the configurations in the vertical or the horizontal configuration. Uh, if you're using it vertically on the spike here, there's a little screw uh, that you can attach the uh, counterpoise to uh, with a ring connector and spread that out. Uh, if you're using this um, vert uh, horizontally, you could uh, attach the uh, counterpoise to the base of the uh, transformer unit, and then uh, the wire would, would, would come off this top stud on the transformer unit. And that's really what we're going to talk about today, is this 73-foot uh, wire. This uh, wire is constructed out of um, a high-quality, stranded, uh, feels like it's like about a about a 20, 18 or 20 gauge wire. It's uh, Teflon or PTFE coated, so it is it's very slick, um, and so it's not going to get hung up in the in the trees if you're trying to get this um, deployed out in the um, in in the trees or the woods or something like that. And then uh, the way this wire this this element is rigged, um, there's a bungee that holds it on the on the line winder here. On one end, uh, we have a ring terminal, and then a crimp connector with a loop, and a little um, a carabiner. And the way this works is there's a shackle that you can attach to the end of the um, transformer unit, and then this carabiner will clip into the shackle, and this wire connector will uh, screw onto this nut right here at, at the at, at the base of the stud and then this and then if you were going to uh, use this in a um, horizontal configuration say like an end fed or a dipole type antenna uh, you can attach your rope to this end and lift the whole thing up into the air uh, you can also use this as a uh, say a sloper antenna or an inverted v style antenna and there's one other um, component of this wire that helps you do that and that is this uh, plastic insulated captive ring that can travel the full length of the antenna. So if we wanted to use this as an inverted V we can uh, ground mount the uh, transformer, attach the wire to one end, use some rope to uh, bring, you know, lift it up into a tree and um, we could uh, put this in inverted V uh, fashion. If we wanted to use this whole antenna as a sloper, uh, we could uh, deploy the entire antenna. And there's another um, insulating ring on the other end 
we can attach a line to this, get it up in the air, you know, say 30 feet, and it would be um, a sloper antenna from the base. Uh, also, finally, you can use it as a dipole antenna. Uh, you could attach this wire on one end here. Uh, you could attach the counterpoise on this end, or you could actually attach another 73-foot wire on this end too, depending if you want say an off-center fed dipole or if you want a full um, a dipole style antenna. So there's a wide variety of of deployments, you know, depending on what types of, um, you know, distance or propagation you're looking for. You know, if you want to keep it very low as an Envis style antenna, uh, you could do it as, uh, what I did is, um, here out camping this weekend, as I set it up in sort of an inverted L configuration, and um, we had this in the base, it went up about 15 feet and out um, across the campsite approximately, you know, however, however many feet the rest of the, the wire is. Uh, if we wanted, say, a little bit more um, mid to longer range communication, we could use it in the sloper configuration. If we want a medium range, you know, maybe the inverted V, um, depending on what your particular needs are for um, to make that make that contact. So. Uh, like I said, you know, with the with the MPAS 2.0, it's it's a really um, versatile type antenna system. You you've got a lot of you got a lot of options, so you to deploy the wire element in however fashion you know you wish, depending on the type of propagation you want to make, or say like the constraints of space you have in the area you're working with. So, uh, with that, uh, why don't we take a little demonstration? I'm gonna. Uh, get this antenna on the air with the other uh, Wisconsin State Aries Races net uh, See how it sounds uh, at 80 meter sideband and um, we'll kind of wrap things up from there This is Whiskey 9 Romeo November Alpha. Bob and out of Gamey, no traffic. KA9 KJE. This is Kilo Bravo Niner November Uniform Mike. Keith in Dodge County with no traffic. Over. KA9 KJE. This is K9 Lima, Romeo, Sierra, portable line in Bryce County, Frank, with no traffic. Good morning. K9 KJE. Kilo, Bravo, Niner, Victor, Bravo, Romeo, uh, portable, Ashland County. I just want to point out a couple of things with this demonstration of the Chameleon MPAS-2 in the um, horizontal or inverted L configuration. Uh, one, uh, we checked into the uh, Wisconsin Aries Races net here uh, Sunday morning and um, conditions were not favorable. Uh, I'm located in far northwestern Wisconsin operating portable with the antenna in an Envis uh, configuration, you know, very low low to the ground, uh, best for you know local or regional contacts. And a net control was in uh, far south eastern Wisconsin, and uh, you know that should have been within the uh, 250 300 mile range that you can expect with uh, Envis communication. But um, one thing to consider about Envis or near vertical incident skywave propagation is that for that mode of propagation to work best, both 
uh, stations need to have their antennas in an Envis uh, configuration. So, you know, if, if his antenna was configured in a more, um, you know, at a, at a higher level or height uh, than mine, you know, if he had a lower takeoff angle than mine, you know, it's that's going to be that's going to make a big difference in uh, the signal strength and quality between the two stations. So that's why net control may have sounded a lot weaker than um, and I did or he had trouble uh, you know a lot more trouble hearing me. Uh, the second thing is that um, we're listening you know um, as other stations checked into the net and you kind of listen listen to them um, uh, pop up um, you know uh, pop up some stations sounded a lot stronger than others and there again you know that shows you know the, you know, the difference of regional propagation and um, antenna configurations. So uh, Envis is an excellent you know, method of communication for local or regional traffic, but um, also you know, it's, everybody's got to be you know, on the same page when it comes to that style of propagation. But other than that, you know, the MPES uh, 2.0 you know, operated great. It wasn't very difficult to get it into a, um, you know, in a horizontal uh, configuration here. You know, my campsite was a little bit small, so the inverted L, you know, I was just able to make it kind of fit into the space I had available to me. Uh, tuned up very well uh, without using the, the external tuner. It was, it was uh, 2.5 to 1 or less right out of the box, so if your radio has an internal tuner, you should have no problem tuning this antenna. Um, and other than that, you know, it's it's a good performer. It, it like I said, the MPAS kit gives you a lot of options to um, um, utilize it in in various configurations. You know, we can do the vertical configuration, we can do the horizontal configuration with the dipoles and the slopers and the end feds. So um, you really you really got. Um, Choices there, and whatever you need to, you know, you can you can put it in in the configuration that works best for your particular needs at that given moment in time. So, uh, do you have any other questions about the Chameleon Impass 2.0? I'd love to hear them. You can always leave them in the comments below. We'll try to answer them as as we go along here. Uh, more articles and information you can always find my uh, find them on my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. As I always say, you know, your support of this channel drives the production of future videos, so you can always do a few things for me. Number one, if you like this video, give me that big thumbs up. Uh, you can view other videos that are suggested alongside here. And also, uh, if you haven't already done so, please hit that subscribe button, press the little bell notification, and you'll be, you'll be notified when future videos are released. That's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day, and 73.